Hello guys, welcome to Steve Knows. We seem to have seen more cheeky bits that have been occurring after the crazy update that we had yesterday with 120 Hertz coming to the quest, the air link, themes, the infant office updates. So we've got some more to go over. And let's start off with the fact that Upload VR put a nice little list together about things that we can potentially expect in the coming showcase on 21st of April from, from Oculus. They're doing their first game showcase, which is going to be all about the games. And this year, I'm incredibly happy to see that. I want to see more software. Hardware's been great. They've been updating it like crazy. But now I need some good games. I need some great titles to actually enjoy in the hardware. So what to expect from the Oculus Gaming Showcase? Every game developer confirmed. So there's going to be more than this, but what's been confirmed? Lone Echo 2 is going to be there. An absolutely fantastic game. And if you haven't played it, go play it. I saw, actually, I did see a tweet recently, someone who just played it for the first time and they just couldn't believe like how incredible it was and that they'd waited so long to actually enjoy it. So we have Lone Echo 2, which Facebook confirmed on their blog post. Let me know if you think this is coming to the Oculus Quest. I kind of think it will. They've discontinued their PC VR headset. So I am hoping that Lone Echo 2 is going to come to the Quest. That would be a pretty big announcement, but I feel like it would also take away from the game's kind of charm. It was this really stunning Hollywood-like VR experience, and then having that on the Quest, where you're really going to have to draw back on those visuals, I don't know, time will tell. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see at the showcase what that's going to be like. Pistol Whip keep on gunning two years after launch, um, and they're going to bring another campaign-driven DLC. Yes, you heard this. So they're going to be bringing a new campaign like they did with 2089, where it was kind of futuristic. This time, they said, I believe they said they're going to go primal, but hats off to Cloudhead Games. They've been pushing out content since its release so much, so hats off to you. Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. So we had part one from the Quest exclusive. Um, I guess they're going to be releasing the second part. Um, I don't know how excited I am about that because the game to me kind of felt so hollow. I was so excited to have this style of free roam Star Wars game and it kind of, it fell quite short for me. Uh, so let me know if your, your thoughts. I know some people feel that way as well, but maybe, maybe you enjoyed it. It just, I was a little let down and I don't see the sequel doing as well. So we have The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. I think that's Skydance Interactive. Sorry if I'm wrong, I believe it is though. So they are showcasing The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, arguably one of the greatest recent releases in virtual reality. Completely unexpected. People thought, okay, this might be a good game, but it really hit all of the marks. And, and it's come to the quest. An absolute miracle how they've done that. So definitely excited to see what else they're going to bring. Vertigo Games. Save the date, 21st. We're going to be doing a reveal. So... Vertigo Games brought us the recent traffic jams, Arizona Sunshine. So I kind of have no idea what they're going to bring us in this because their catalogue of games seems to vary so much. But there is a really big game that is going to be coming to PC VR. So I expect them to be showing off after the fall. This is it on Steam. The team that brought you Arizona Sunshine, an epic VR FPS with intense co-op gameplay at its core. And that's the part that gets me excited because the game looks so intense and brilliant and it's going to be cooperative. So pumped really excited to see this one because i kind of love zombies as well anything zombie like want to eat humans mutated it has my heart so i'm really excited to see more of this maybe a quest port i doubt it i doubt it <laughs> but you live in hope right we live in hope we also have fast travel games they're about to launch the afterlife uh wraith oblivion the afterlife and that's this kind of like detective style game you might have seen it already bmf did an exclusive early access gameplay video reveal of it as well so you can check that out so that's probably what they're going to show um so nothing new there I want to see um, new games, what else is coming. So that's the list. But I'm sure there's a lot more games that we're going to see. There's a few titles that I have in my head that haven't been mentioned here, but I know are potentially coming out soon or have been kind of rumoured. So really excited for that date. It's all about the games this time. All about the games. And speaking of games, the version 28 update is going to bring 120 hertz. And it seems like an update has already come for a game that is going to support 120 hertz. And that is Cubism. So on launch, as soon as this feature is available, apparently you're going to be able to use it for this game. So Cubism is this kind of like Tetris VR puzzler where you have the shape in the middle of, the, of your play space. And then you have to use all these smaller shapes to kind of construct that larger, bigger shape. 
So this was recently announced after they tweeted out patch 1.24 is live, adding a refresh rate option for the Quest 2 users in the settings, including experimental support for 120 hertz. 120 hertz needs to be enabled in the experimental features menu on the Oculus Home first. So that's what it will look like there on screen. In general settings, 120 hertz is available, but you'll have to go to your experimental settings of the Quest and enable it there as well. So this, although this is really great to see, um, it's Nothing against the game, but it's just the kind of game where it's not really making use of those frames. It's not fast pace. It's a slow puzzler. You're there by yourself. It's kind of... It might make it a bit more immersive, of course, maybe slightly smoother, but you're not moving at a fast pace to really, you know, use that 120 hertz. And the graphics aren't that intense either. They're just simple shapes. So... Th this could be a sign of the kinds of games that we're going to see be able to support 120 hertz. Games that aren't really going to use it. I said this in the video yesterday as well, talking about it, that I'm more excited about using this refresh rate on games for PC VR. So when PC VR supports 120 hertz, I feel like then we're really going to get the most out of it. And for a device for $299, to have these kind of features and these specs, it's rather shocking to think you know, a year or two years ago to now, that difference, absolutely mind-blowing. So yeah, Cubism, as soon as version 28 is available, you'll be able to use 120 hertz. So this is kind of an interesting one. This is a PC VR title that's finally hit early access. And we heard about this, I believe, last year. It was a, it was a long time back, or maybe even earlier than that. Oh yeah, back in 2019, we wrote about VR Skater. So if you played a game called Skate, and you loved it, or you liked the old classic Tony Hawks, imagine reimagine that kind of game but for virtual reality and you have VR skater. So the way this works, rather than having a sandbox arena, rather than having like a skate park where you can just free roam and go nuts, it's going to be more linear courses where you will have to do certain controls in order to do tricks and jumps, which kind of makes sense because this kind of control in virtual reality when you don't have the peripherals for your feet to kind of control the pushing, the leaning and the steering, it might be kind of difficult to make a game that's actually good for newcomers and comfortable enough where people actually think, oh, I'm enjoying this without too much kind of, kind of effort. Not, you really have to find that balance. So you can pick up speed by swinging your motion controllers a little like you would your leg. Players will be able to try out the game's core mechanics and master tricks like flips and grinds. Plus, there will be tutorials and a run mode on the first fully designed map. They're going to add six more levels and a career mode, a skateboarding career mode classic. I hope we're going to get some skateboarding competitions where we can try to do our tricks. Leaderboards online, perhaps competitions where we can have a multiplayer option as well. It does say online leaderboards. So that would be that would be pretty sweet. He's a professional. I want to see Tony Hawk, Rodney Mullen at the top of this leaderboard. One of them. They've got to get it, surely. They're missing a, an opportunity here to advertise their game if they don't get one of those involved. One of those people. So a touch on the Pico Neo 3 new headset. It's going to be available in Asia and people keep raising up comparisons against the Oculus Quest and they kind of seem a lot more apparent. Um, it looks a lot more like the Quest than I previously, than the previous models had. It got compared previously as this kind of standalone, but now they've definitely, definitely been inspired. So Pico Interactive revealed the specifications of the Neo 3 headset. Yes, they did. So this is it here. This is what it looks like. The classic kind of black stripe. And um, from the side, it looks like a Quest with an elite strap on it nearly. Maybe that's just a good design. Maybe that's what it is. It's just a good design. They're not trying to copy. It's also going to contain the Snapdragon XR2 chip. A great chip for a standalone device. Uh, it's also what the Quest has as well. And they've also changed the way they're going to track their controllers. Previously, they were using electromagnetic tracking quite a cool idea it also allowed you to be out of the view of your of, of, of your cameras and still be able to track like behind your back and in awkward positions but they've changed that for this they've got the optical tracking so the cameras that are in the headset inside out tracking as we kind of the default kind of tracking that we know in the standalone devices or at least in the oculus quest i should say it says it's going to include wi-fi 6 it doesn't say wi-fi 6 e though which i hope it does if it supports Wi-Fi 6E, it's going to have the higher frequency and uh, that would in, in turn be reduced latency. So if we wanted to use it as a wireless solution, then the latency drop would be beneficial. But if it's just Wi-Fi 6, we just have a bandwidth increase. It has a 90 hertz visual screen, which is it's the default now for virtual reality. All the headsets just have 90 hertz unless you're the 
unless you're the Rift S and you have 80. I still don't get that, the downgrade from the previous model to the S and it has less potential frames. Crazy, crazy to me. Anyway, so they've also got an, a manual IPD slider. Yes, manual IPD adjustment as a slider. It was so good on the Quest 1. It's definitely the way forward. I want that every time. Digital solutions are a pain. They're not convenient. And then this kind of tiered system on the Quest is also not convenient because if you're in the middle of the two tiers, you have a inferior experience. It's also got a curved screen, which I like because the eye, the eye is curved. So when like, for instance, when you have these kind of curved monitors or the curved TV, the monitor kind of goes around your peripheral and the curve is supposed to kind of improve the vision because it's kind of surrounding your line of sight because the eyeball is rounded. But having that in a VR headset for a screen that's really quite up close and your vision is absolutely paramount to the experience, really interested to see how that's going to be. And hopefully I've spoken to Pico, be able to get one of these devices once one is available in the UK so I can test it out and uh, show it off to you guys. This is just a little one to touch on. The Epic Game MetaHuman Creator now finally hit early access. We spoke about this before and this is a way to create the non-playable characters in a way where they just look so good. And we're hoping that we can kind of adopt this tech because Epic Games make virtual reality titles. They can adopt this tech and make these kind of NPCs and these great characters in virtual reality. So we can have stunning, stunning NPCs rather than these kind of dead-eyed, pixelated blocks. So MetaHumans are Epic's attempts to bring lifelike humans into video games. The creator is now available as part of an early access program where anyone can create their own 3D human avatars using the Unreal Engine. Look at that example there. It almost looks like a photograph. Isn't that ridiculous? That looks so good. This is the initial video that they showed the virtual reality experience. So this is uh, someone using the creator, but for an avatar that's in virtual reality. So they're using the headset to look around it, get close detail. But it really is one of the most... Best looking humans that you have seen in virtual reality for a long time. If I got this in a modern day video game, I'd be pretty stoked as well. Like on a flat screen game, let alone a virtual reality title. So thank you ETR VR for this one. Really absolutely stunning. So if you're a developer and you're thinking about using this, please comment down below. Because uh, I'd really like to see this for myself in a game. I doubt we'll get something like this on side quest though. Well, that's it today, guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, getting caught up on what had been happening recently in the virtual reality space. Please subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I'll see you next time. And happy gaming, guys. Good day.